in the year 1348, in the notable city of Florence, fairest in all of Italy, there came the death-dealing pestilence. Merely touching the clothes of the sick, or being in the same room as them, appeared to communicate the malady to the toucher. Thus the plague extended, without cease, across the known world. Kinsfolk seldom visited one another and held no converse together, save from afar. Such was the terror that had stricken the hearts of all. Fearing that they should catch the disease, a group of young Florentines quit the city. They sought a refuge in a house on the summit of the hill. On the first night, Pampanea, the leader of this merry gang, commanded her friends to be silent, and thus spake. Let us pass away this term of confinement by telling stories. Each speaker shall, in their turn, amuse and divert all the company who hearken. So, me and my best friend are walking down this street. It's quite dark out, um, it's probably raining. And we were walking down this bit once, and there's a dog that li lives there. We were walking, and then suddenly there's this loud barking. Me and my friend jumped out of our skin, and then it was just the dog. And um, we carry on walking down the street. We go down here. And here, we're going a bit more into Camden now. Here we have Castle Haven Park, which is one of my favorite places in the entire world. We come up to the entrance to the park and we walk through and we walk down the path and we look around and we see all the footballers playing football, even in the pouring rain. And we carry on walking and we go to our little spot behind the, rail behind the railings and sit down and chat. Yeah, that's it. So we've been looking at the Decameron and it's a novel written by a writer called Giovanni Boccaccio in the 14th century. And what it is, is a collection of stories told over 10 days by 10 young people who flee the city of Florence. The reason they're fleeing the city is because of the Black Death, otherwise known as the plague, which killed many, many people. And so it was necessary to quarantine yourself to avoid getting it. So these young people quarantine themselves in a house at the top of a hill. Um, and during this time, they every evening they tell stories. In doing this, they reflect on society and, and going forward. Telling these stories, they're passing time and forgetting about what has happened in their city.
It's clean. It's bright. There are birds about. Less rubbish. More friends. With more laughs than we can count. Light seeps in through the trees, creating dancing shadows. People smile as we go by. Leaves cover the floor, crunching underfoot as the new leaves take their place. The sky is empty in the colour of the ocean. Talk of days gone by fill the air. Feathers falling from the sky as the world feels whole again. I thought we were kind of be like stuck in the plague or like Ugh, it was just so much to handle because like, I was like, I didn't really know how to feel at first, but then once I kept on hearing about it and kept on hearing how worse it was getting and no one was like doing much about it, I was like, I was getting really angry. It's like, if this is a massive thing, people need to be speaking out about it more. I think because one of the reasons they were like, oh, we don't want to do lockdown, because they're like, oh, it will damage the economy. And I'm like, yeah, I know the economy is so important, whatever. But if you think about how much more damage has happened to the economy, but also, how is money kind of taking priority over people's lives? Mm. I was, I was really, I think I was quite ignorant before the lockdown happened, because I remember like seeing all this like stuff online, and I, me and my mates were always like sharing like memes and stuff, and it was all kind of like a novelty. It didn't really sink in, and I think like when I think about it, it was really bad, but like me and my friends were like having bets about like, oh, who's going to get Corona first and stuff like this. And when you think back to it, you're like, that's terrible. But at the time it felt so like it didn't exist. It felt like a, like it was fictional. And um, I remember like literally the day before not, uh, lockdown was announced. Um, I think I like said to my friends, like, let's try and go over the park and have one more game of football before this all happens. Because by this point, everyone was saying like, it's only a matter of days before it's going to happen. So we all went over the park and played football. And I remember we just finished playing and we started to watch the Boris's speech on my phone. And like, we're all sitting there and we're just watching it. And we're just like, it just didn't feel real. And I feel like the point where it actually hit for me that it was real was like the first time I saw the death toll. Um, and the first time that I actually like thought about the people who were dying. And I realized that it was closer to home and it was actually how big this was that it started to sink in for me and I think that's the point where I sort of changed from making jokes about it and try to cover up the fact that there was a risk um, when I realised it was actually really affecting people's lives and I think yeah that was a big moment for me when I first I saw the, the death toll yeah. It was a time when the world paused. It was a time when every day felt the same. It was a time of little pleasures and little pleasure. It was a time where uncertainty swept over the whole world. When we looked to our government who had no answers. It was a time you knew would end eventually, but still the toughest, and you still didn't think you'd get through it. It was a time where you had to wait 30 minutes outside your local Iceland just for a bottle of Coke. It was a time when doctors, nurses, and key workers put the nation's lives in front of their own. But it was also a time where distance brought people closer together. It was a time you found unexpected friends. When the best part of the week was a community you created. It was a time where people finally started talking about mental health, kinda. It was a time where we took justice into our own hands. It was a time when the birds sang louder than they ever had before. It was the time the reset button was pressed. really looking forward to being able to go outside again. Same. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to meeting new people. Honestly, yeah. I'm looking forward to using public transport again. Yeah. Like, I, I miss the sound of the tube and the yeah. bus. I know. Yeah. Taking the bus to school is actually the most iconic thing ever. The weird people who get on your bus as well. Yeah. Oh. They, they used to yeah. ruin your day, yeah, but I'm now it's going to make it. I know, you're like... like um, I'm really looking forward to being able to hug people and... Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Physical contact. Yeah. yeah. I'm really looking forward to like finally meeting you guys in real life. You know? Yeah. Uh, oh, I can't awesome. wait. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're 
couple different heights are, because... <laughs> <laughs>